So you might have heard of alchemy, an ancient tradition whose main goal was to find a way to transmute things or transmute substances from one to another. With one of the primary goals for many alchemists being the transformation of base metals, like for example iron and lead, into a much more precious state, such as for example gold, which alchemists consider to be the highest form of matter. And while for many centuries alchemists searched for different ways to transform matter, and many of the early aspects used in alchemy eventually gave way to science we know today. But the reason I wanted to start with alchemy is because in the last few years researchers have actually now figured out what creates gold in the universe or essentially found several different mechanisms that actually do turn things like iron into gold. Here this is only possible in the extremely powerful events that we're going to be discussing today. And so hello info person, this is Anton. In this video we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries in regards to how gold seems to be produced in the universe. And mostly based on recent studies that actually solved some of the older mysteries, revealing that gold can be created in a lot of different ways we never expected. Or I guess revealing these alchemical processes in the universe itself. And here this is kind of important because up until a few years back, up until I guess 2017, it wasn't entirely clear how gold was produced. For example, we know that various types of supernova seem to be responsible for producing a lot of heavier elements through the process of nucleosynthesis, with many observations of supernova remnants revealing actual elements being dispersed from the center. But it was really in August of 2017 that researchers finally confirmed how the majority of gold seems to be created. Here, by using some of the most advanced telescopes combined with the observations from LIGO, scientists finally discovered a gravitational wave that was also correlated with a major explosion. And specifically, this was a merger of two neutron stars that resulted in an enormous kilonova, where approximately 12 hours later, several telescopes were able to identify the explosion and observe the materials. This was approximately 130 million light years away from us, but it was close enough to observe exactly what was produced. And so this enormous energy resulted in the production of gold, along with several other heavier elements. Suggesting that energy in this collision was powerful enough to transform iron and a lot of other lighter elements into much heavier elements through what's known as the R process, also known as rapid neutron capture process. The process of rapid capture of neutrons by a lot of different atomic nuclei that results in the production of much much heavier elements. And so here, for days afterwards, by observing the infrared emissions, researchers discovered definitive fingerprints of several different elements whose origin was previously unknown. We've actually discussed this in more detail in one of the videos in the description. And so here, basically, for the first time ever, humanity witnessed alchemy of the universe itself, matter turning into gold, with this one single collision creating an enormous amount of it, approximately 10 masses of planet Earth. All of this was done in just mere seconds. But following this event on August 17th of 2017, researchers continuously looked for other events, and specifically other additional events that can actually result in this R process that could explain other heavy elements or other gold. Because based on the predictions of this kilonova, there is just not enough of them to produce all of the gold we seem to be observing, suggesting that the universe very likely had other alchemical means. Ok, I really should stop calling it alchemy because here we're really talking about our process, an actual scientific process that we can even recreate in a lab. And so not so long ago, in a separate study you see right here, researchers also speculated that it's quite possible that some other events, and specifically collapsing stars that end up producing black holes, could also result in the R process producing a lot of materials. And so things like gold, silver, and even uranium might actually be formed by extremely young, newly formed black holes that contain an accretion disk of a very specific size. And that's because in these conditions, the accretion disk also seems to encourage R process, causing a dramatic enrichment of neutrons in various elements. But because this process has to happen extremely fast, here this could only happen in certain accretion disks. They basically had to have a specific shape and a specific mass. And so for example during a collapse of a star that usually produces a baby black hole, it usually ends up having an accretion disk containing a lot of really hot material. But here at the same time we get a lot of neutrinos which result in nucleosynthesis happening in mere milliseconds. And so a black hole of a certain mass and a certain spin with a certain mass of accretion disk 
can occasionally have just the right conditions to suddenly start producing a lot of heavy elements. With the most important factor being the mass of the disk. A much more massive disk will obviously result in a much higher R process and the formation of more elements, but if it's too high, the neutrinos end up being recaptured by neutrons, thus hindering the R process and thus decreasing nucleosynthesis. And so basically here, in order to prevent certain types of radioactive decay, the accretion disk had to reach a certain balance. In their simulations, this usually happened with a disk with a mass of about 1 to maybe 10% the mass of the Sun. And in those conditions, these particular systems became extremely prolific at creating gold, or technically many different heavy elements. But in this case, it's obviously unclear how this gold would escape the system and if it's even going to survive being swallowed by a black hole. Now, technically, it could escape through the black hole jets or possibly by being expelled in some other way, but because all of this is based on modeling, right now this is more of a hypothetical concept. But the most recent paper that was just released is not hypothetical and actually did discover a completely new way to generate gold in the universe. And this time, this is based on an older mystery of a very strange explosion detected in 2004. And you can even read about this in one of the older articles by NASA. Or in this much older study by Palmer and his team. And in essence, back then this was one of the most powerful flashes detected in the night skies. An extremely powerful flare that lasted for a few seconds and seemed to be coming from our own galaxy from approximately 50,000 light years away from us. And well, within just a few weeks, it became pretty clear what this was. This was a very powerful flare, but a flare coming from an extremely powerful magnetar. A mysterious type of a neutron star that we're still trying to understand. And so this magnetar produced such a powerful flare that it became visible from really far away. Suggesting that it released just as much energy as the sun in approximately 1 million years. Except here, all of this was in just a few seconds. And though additional flares have been discovered around other magnetars, here there was actually another mystery. Approximately 10 minutes afterwards, there was a second, much smaller signal. A signal that was not really explained at first and was eventually forgotten. And now, 20 years later, researchers finally found an explanation for what happened, providing specific details and explanations for what exactly occurred and why there were actually two signals. Now, first of all, the initial flare was most likely the result of some kind of a major reshuffling around the magnetar, such as, for example, some kind of a star quake. And well, according to Anirudh Patel and the team you see right here, during extremely powerful flares from magnetars, there should be enough energy to initiate our process once again, once again converting lighter elements into something much heavier. In other words, here there was actually a prediction. A prediction that a magnetar, in theory, should be also able to produce gold if the flare is powerful enough. But the thing is, up until recently, this was just a prediction. There was no actual evidence. And that's until they started to go through some of the older data. And that's when they discovered that second signal from 2004. And here researchers quickly realized that all of this seems to fit. First of all, the signal was never explained. Second of all, it seemed to fit their model precisely. And third of all, it provided an important solution to the mystery of missing gold and missing heavy elements. And so it looks like they discovered a new type of cosmic alchemy. Here, this powerful flare resulted in a sudden production of a lot of heavier elements, which resulted in a lot of heavy atoms that were not stable. And these heavy radioactive nuclei decayed in mere seconds, producing much more stable elements such as gold. And it's really this sudden radioactive decay that we seem to be observing in that second emission. And that's because all of these elements would suddenly start to glow for a few seconds. In this case, this was visible as a sudden burst of gamma rays. And while based on total emissions, looks like this produced approximately one third of Earth's mass in heavy metals, or one Mars mass of gold. All resulting from things like iron that was suddenly enriched and became gold. And based on the amount of magnetars we expect and the amounts of flares we expect, this new research presents us with a new important explanation. This flaring process very likely produces up to about 10% of all heavy elements, potentially explaining where a lot of heavy elements came from and presenting us with another way heavy elements can easily form. But I guess more specifically, providing direct evidence that this is indeed possible, with the only other evidence we had previously being that kilonova from 2017. But in order to confirm this, we need to detect more gamma ray bursts and of course more flares from various magnetars. And so chances are that in the next few years, 
we'll actually discover more. And there's even a perfect telescope for the job. Compton Spectrometer and Imager that's going to be launched in 2027. A new gamma ray telescope that's going to be perfect in trying to detect as many of these as possible. But as of 2025, this is the only such detection. The only magnetar so far that was able to produce gold and of course other heavier elements. And so until future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. We'll definitely come back and talk about this more. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.